The primary function of a laboratory fume hood is to protect the user and laboratory occupants from exposure to chemical vapors, aerosols, odors, and other harmful substances by capturing, containing, and dispersing the materials. The use of fume hoods must still be combined with the use of personal protective equipment, or PPE, as the fume hoods alone are not enough to protect the user from all the potential hazardous exposure. This video does not apply to biological safety cabinets or laminar flow clean benches. Biological safety cabinets and laminar flow clean benches are sometimes mistaken for fume hoods. These devices utilize particulate filters, which do not remove chemical vapors. There are various types of fume hoods and specially designed ones for specific applications. When you're purchasing a fume hood, speak with the vendor on what types of chemicals and activities will be conducted so that you receive the correct design. Conventional fume hood. A partially enclosed workspace that's mechanically ventilated and intended to capture, contain, and exhaust gases, vapors, or aerosols generated within the enclosure. Perchloric acid fume hood. Perchloric acid fume hoods are designed specifically for the use of perchloric acid. Interior liners are made of acid-resistant materials. Interior corners are coved to aid in cleaning. Perchloric fume hoods require built-in water washdown systems in order to prevent the buildup of explosive perchlorate salt deposits. Radioisotope fume hoods. Radioisotope fume hoods are constructed specifically to withstand the weight of lead shielding plates and made with coved corners to aid in decontamination. Acid digestion fume hoods. Acid digestion fume hoods are constructed with acid resistant materials such as unplasticized PVC. Other materials such as PVDF may be used for acid digestion applications involving high service temperatures. Sashes may be made out of polycarbonate to resist hydrofluoric acid etching. Floor mounted fume hoods. These fume hoods are characterized by a floor level work surface. They accommodate large and heavy pieces of equipment. When you operate a fume hood, you should always be wearing the appropriate eye and face protection, respiratory protection, gloves, and lab coat. Fume hoods should be evaluated by the user before each use to ensure that they are in proper working condition. Items to inspect include Exhaust fan Ensure the exhaust fan is functional before starting your work. Baffles Check the baffle slots are free of obstruction. Baffles are a fixed or adjustable panel located at the rear of the fume hood chamber that controls the pattern of air movement into and through the fume hood. Baffles are only adjusted by qualified airflow experts. These baffles optimize capture efficiency. Airfoil. Make sure that there are no obstructions blocking the airfoil or sill. This is a deflector located at the front of the fume hood. It's shaped to promote uniform airflow into the fume hood, preventing the creation of turbulent eddies that can carry vapors out of the hood. Airflow monitor. Fume hoods are installed with airflow monitors. Make sure to check the monitor's status regularly while working so that you can be alert if there are changes in airflow. The airflow monitor also has an alarm that's activated when there's insufficient airflow. If the alarm is activated, stop the experiment and contact your supervisor. The fume hood should be taken out of service until the issue is rectified. Sash. Ensure that the sash is operable. For vertical sashes, the sash is recommended to be set a maximum of 18 inches from the working surface while working in the hood to ensure maximum flow rate. However, you should open the sash only as far as required to perform the necessary functions as the sash acts as a face and body shield. 
Avoid making any rapid motions of the sash, body, arm, or hand, as well as having pedestrian traffic in front of the operating fume hood, as these will cause airflow disturbances, which can negatively affect the capturability of the fume hood. Also avoid placing your head or torso inside the fume hood enclosure. It's a good rule of thumb to keep your face at least six inches away from the sash. When you're not conducting any experiments inside the fume hood, keep the sash fully closed. It's important not to use the fume hood as a storage area. This creates a hazard by potentially blocking airflow and interfering with the containment of vapors and aerosols. When you have excessive storage of materials or equipment, it can cause turbulence or reverse flow, resulting in vapors and aerosols escaping from the hood. When conducting an experiment, keep the smallest amount of chemicals in the fume hood needed to conduct the experiment at hand. Work with flammable chemicals should not be conducted in a hood that contains hot plates, open flames, or equipment that generates electrical sparks. Any experiments that are conducted and have sources of emission should be located at a minimum of 6 inches inside the hood. Equipment should be located 9 to 12 inches inside the hood. Remember, these are only guidelines. For more details, always refer to the manufacturer's manual and instructions for the specific fume hood that you've purchased. It's important not to use conventional fume hoods to experiment with materials that have explosive reactions. The fume hood is not designed to contain explosions, even when the sash is fully closed, as the enclosures do not have sufficient strength to deflect or contain it. If there's flammable materials present in the fume hood, it's extremely urgent that you remove all ignition sources from its vicinity. Do not use perchloric acid in conventional fume hood. Perchloric acid fume hoods are designed with special construction materials and washdown systems. Washdown systems are important to prevent the buildup of explosive perchlorate salt deposits. Do not use radioisotopes in conventional fume hoods. These fume hoods are designed with special construction material for ease of decontamination and to withstand the weight of lead shielding plates. If you're working with microorganisms, or materials contaminated with, or potentially contaminated with a pathogen, do not use a fume hood. A biological safety cabinet should be used instead as they're designed to remove particulates versus vapors and aerosols. Daily maintenance should be conducted by fume hood users before each use. Ensure that the work surface, baffles, and airfoil are clean and free of obstructions. It's important to inspect the sash mechanism for any corrosion, damage, broken glass, and to ensure that it's operable. The operation should be smooth and easy throughout the sash's travel. Ensure that the airflow monitor and alarm is operational. Check that the controls for services such as water, natural gas, and compressed air are labeled and functional. If available, ensure the general illumination, indicator lights, and associated switches are properly working. Ensure cleaning and proper housekeeping. If using a perchloric fume hood, ensure washdown systems are functioning. Fume hoods and their associated exhaust systems shall be maintained in proper working conditions. 
The fan, motor, drive belt, shaft, bearings, and machine guard should be inspected. Inspect the sink drain for any corrosion, leakage, and blockage. The carbon filters for contamination and leakage. If you notice any issues with your fume hood, it's important to stop all experiments, close the hood sash completely, and notify your supervisor of the issue. In order to prolong the life of fume hoods and ensure safety, a written schedule of preventative activities confirming to the manufacturer's instructions should be developed. All maintenance activities need to be documented in a maintenance log that's readily available. Fume hoods should be certified annually to ensure that they're operating functionally. You will note a calibration sticker on the fume hood showing the company that inspected it, the date of inspection, and the next inspection date.